One of the most controversial ingredients in the nutrition space is also the one that's been studied to have some of the most benefits on our brain, our body, and body fat loss goals. But it is one of, if not the most polarizing ingredients out there. So today let's dive into the impact that animal-based foods have on our body, our brain, and body fat loss goals. My name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. Now I'm gonna start this off by saying I used to be a vegetarian for pretty much my entire like youth. <laughs> until it was probably like 13, 14. I kind of forget exactly when it stopped. I then started to slowly eat some animal proteins, mostly some chicken, a little bit of cheese. And then I had a brief stint of veganism for like six months in college. So I totally understand why someone might want to avoid meat and that is completely your choice. But I do want to go into the amazing science fact benefits of incorporating animal-based products because honestly, this is something that I wish I knew a lot longer ago. Now let's first dive into the category of weight loss. There's a recent study that found that eating higher amounts of protein actually did better in terms of weight loss and reduced body fat than just typical calorie restriction alone. It helped to reduce fat loss while also maintaining lean mass, which has a lot of great benefits from a long-term longevity perspective. By maintaining the muscle mass and the lean mass, it helps to maintain insulin sensitivity, which just makes maintaining those weight loss goals a lot easier in the future. And by having that improved insulin sensitivity, it can help reduce the risk of type two diabetes later in life. Now, of course, protein can come from both animal and plant-based food products. But the problem comes in where we look at how much protein is really needed to see these benefits. Usually it's going to be around 20% of someone's intake, which will roughly equate to about 100 or more grams per day. Now, if we look at animal-based foods like fish, chicken, beef, they're going to be very dense in high quality absorbable protein while also being really low, if not non-existent in those insulin spiking starches. Insulin is the storing hormone. So when we're looking to balance out the benefits of eating enough protein to see those weight loss results, we also wanna make sure that we're not simultaneously packing in a lot of the types of foods that will then spike the storing hormone insulin at the same time. Now, when we're looking at quantities, you're getting way more protein bang for your buck with animal-based proteins versus plant-based proteins. So let's say we're trying to get about 35 grams of protein at each meal in order to try and hit that total of 100 grams of protein per day. To get 35 grams of protein from quinoa, you would need about four and a half cups of quinoa, which has about 999 calories calories and about 154 net grams of carbohydrates. And then if we take a look at peanut butter, you'd need about 10 tablespoons of peanut butter, which has about 602 calories and 67 grams of net carbohydrates. If you're getting that 35 grams from black beans, you need about two and a half cups of black beans, which comes packed with 602 calories and 67 net grams of carbohydrates. Now, if you're getting it from edamame, this one's actually a lot better than some of the other plant-based sources. You need about two cups of edamame, which has about 375 calories and 12 net grams of carbs. But if you were to get that from beef, you would only need about 4.75 ounces of beef, which comes in at around 320 calories and zero net grams of carbohydrates. Now keep in mind, this doesn't account for protein digestibility. So you'd actually need to eat a lot more quinoa, for example, than just the four and a half cups to actually absorb the true 35 grams of protein. You'd also need to pair different proteins together like beans because they're incomplete, which then just brings the total carbohydrate count even higher. Now, if you are purely plant-based and trying to optimize your protein while minimizing your carbohydrates, definitely soy and preferably fermented soy are going to be your best options as we just saw with edamame. I personally usually recommend tempeh. But if this idea of protein absorption and how some proteins are better than others is brand new to you, you'll definitely wanna check out my video on this. I go into it a lot more detail right up here. So simply put, you can achieve your protein needs pretty easily with animal-based sources without all of those additional starches. And it's not to say that you can't also have some of these things like beans and quinoa but as we've seen, they just aren't great sources of protein. So instead prioritizing from higher quality sources, the vast majority of your protein can be more helpful from a weight loss perspective. Okay, now let's move into the body section. This is where things get really interesting. Now there's actually a study that compared vegetarians to omnivores who ate the exact same amount of total protein, but found that the omnivores had a much higher quality of muscle mass, which is so crucial for longevity. The animal-based proteins also have a lot of vital nutrients that are needed for early in life. One meta-analysis of 18 studies that represented about 90,000 people across 11 countries reviewed stunting and impaired growth development from reduced access to these really important animal-based nutrients earlier in life. And it found that in certain countries where they have a 
lot less access to these animal-based products, had significantly higher levels of stunting and impaired growth development, often exceeding 30% of individuals. Even among the populations that supplement these diets with fruit and vegetables, stunting still remains a problem, partly because plant foods lack readily bioavailable forms of various micronutrients because they are bound to other compounds like phytate or fiber, markedly reducing their bioavailability. It also detailed the lack of vitamin B12 and how that caused increased risk of anemia or developmental delays or failure to thrive in babies. And then when we take a look at the liver, there's a really important nutrient that is mostly found in eggs called choline. And it's been noted that a lack of this intake of choline can actually cause liver cell death in humans. Now there are very small amounts of choline that are less digestible in plant foods, but you can literally get pretty much all of your daily choline needs for liver health with just three eggs per day. And then older adults need these higher quality sources of protein even more than the younger. Most people think that as you get older that you need less protein, but you actually need even more because of increased bone loss, increased muscle loss, and just reduced ability to break down protein. In fact, the Australian recommended dietary intake for protein is actually 25% higher for those who are 70 or older. But researchers have specifically stated that older adults actually achieve greater strength and greater muscle mass by using something like whey protein instead, which is from an animal-based source. One review found that by increasing protein intake, which is a lot easier to do from animal-based sources in older adults, resulted in increased lean muscle mass, reduced incidence of frailty, faster walking speed, reduced in-hospital and overall complication rates, and fewer health problems during the next 10 years in women. And then we get to the brain. Animal-based foods contain nutrients in really high amounts that are really absorbable and easy for us to access, and nutrients that are especially important for brain health. In fact, early life iron deficiency can actually impair brain development, and then choline, which as you remember is high in eggs, is used in high quantities for a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which which is a chemical that's been known to improve memory. Fatty acids like EPA and DHA, which are found in huge quantities in foods like fish, make up about one fifth of our brain's dry weight and is really important for brain development. And in terms of learning and development, there's a really interesting study done in Kenya. They took two groups of students and added meat into one group and then just milk into another. So still an animal-based product, but not meat product specifically. And this study found that animal source food supplementation increased exam scores by 45 using meat and 28 by using milk. It also improved leadership skills and overall behavior of children. The same study also stated that consumption of animal source foods by infants and pregnant women is positively associated with better child language, motor, personal, and social skills. The researchers found that supplementation of these animal-based foods increased cognitive functions by up to 20 fold. And when it comes to the brain, we also can't leave this subject without talking about mental health. This subject is really close and near and dear to my heart because if you followed me for a little bit, you know that I really struggled with anxiety for a long time. And there's one meta-analysis of 20 studies representing over 170,000 people that found that those who ate animal products, specifically meat, had significantly lowers of depression and anxiety. Now this could be due to a variety of different reasons, could be due to more stable blood sugar levels from possibly a higher protein intake, could be because of all of the nutrients that we just discussed that are really important for brain development and function but I can personally say that it's been about four or five years since I've really increased my animal food intake. And I found that my anxiety levels have just night and day drastically improved. I no longer wake up with that feeling of like dread in the morning that is really common with anxiety. Like, yeah, there are some days that are not as great, but compared to what it used to be, night and day. Now, all that being said, I still understand why there might be some people who don't want to incorporate animal-based products for personal or religious purposes. But I will note there is a really interesting discussion going on in the nutrition space right now on regenerative farming and using these higher quality practices of farming to actually promote better lives for these animals while also actually helping with carbon emissions. If you guys want to check out that book, it's an amazing one, no affiliation, but it's called Sacred Cow and I'll have it linked down description below for you guys. It was really interesting. I read a couple years ago and I do think it's an important topic to learn more about and just be more educated on. But if after all this you're still like, 
nah, animal-based food's just not for me, that's also totally fine. It's your choice and I respect that and we should all respect each other's decisions on how we choose to eat. But at the very least, I do hope you're looking into the higher quality plant-based sources like the tempeh or edamame or fermented soy products and looking into the supplements that are needed to make sure you're still getting those vital nutrients for growth and development and health. And if you're plant-based, vegetarian, omnivorous, to help get you started on this topic of higher quality protein sources and how you can get them regardless of your dietary choices, make sure you check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.